as programmers, we need to work with dates and times, and it can be extremely painful to do so. Sure, we have our languages and frameworks, but they only work as well as your database. If you're using Postgres, however, you're in good hands. But why is working with dates painful, you ask? The first reason is our own arrogance, which is really the only word for it. Most programmers don't worry about dates until their boss or client calls them and says, so can we talk about the dates because they don't make any sense? It's true, we just don't think about reporting until it's too late. Sometimes we have to deal with people trying to be helpful, like adding a column to Excel for us that formats a weird UTC date into something more human readable. When we try to import this data, fun things happen. This CSV right here came from NASA JPL. It's the very real data from NASA's Cassini mission to Saturn. Unfortunately, the date column they created, to be helpful, incorrectly translated the date because they used an older version of Excel. Or I don't know, it's government, so maybe Lotus 123 was in use back then. Either way, as you can see, whatever software they used decided that there was a leap year in 2014, which is incorrect. How did this happen? Well, before we get there, if you've always wanted to learn SQL and the basics of databases, I wrote a free ebook using the actual football data from an NFL season. You can follow along and learn how to normalize a database, run basic queries, and most of all, learn the power of being a data person for your project. Okay, back to the CSV. Now, long story short, there is a leap year bug in Excel. That's right, and it's well documented. This screenshot is from the Microsoft site, which acknowledges that fact. When our helpful person copied and formatted column A, that bug created an invalid leap year out of a perfectly valid UTC date. Good times. The best part is that Microsoft have decided not to fix this problem because of two reasons. Compatibility with Lotus 123 and, well, people are just kind of used to it, I guess. Okay, arrogance and spreadsheet bugs aside, there's also daylight savings. But I'm sure your application handles this just fine, right? Daylight savings offset for U.S. data? One of the most fun things about being a U.S. citizen well, except if you live in Arizona or Hawaii, which is my old home, which have opted out of that mess. Well, until next year when that mess becomes permanent. But I'm sure you've taken all this into account because you store all your dates in UTC, correct? That should work just fine for every case, maybe. But I would like to share a story with you. In February of 2013, my accountant was asking for a sales summary for my company, TechPub, so he could prepare my corporate taxes for the year 2012. I ran a quick query on my sales data, rolling up on the year 2012, and I sent that to him along with my bank statements. An hour later, I got a phone call. <laughs> and six hours after that, I learned more about Postgres and time zones than I ever thought possible. Let's dive in. Now, as you likely know, the world is divided up into time zones, some of which make sense, some don't. It's a weird mishmash of rules and a refusal to follow those rules that amounts to no one being able to agree as to what time it actually is which is proof that the earth is actually flat and all of this is nonsense anyway. So given this, programmers have decided the best way to deal with time zones is to just ignore them altogether, opting to save their dates using UTC, which is actually Greenwich Mean Time is dictated by this laser communicating with aliens from Andromeda. Now, the first thing to understand is the most important. Postgres knows all about this. It always stores dates as UTC under the covers no matter what type you throw at it. It's only when you query this information does the time zone situation and data type that you use really matter. This is where the fun starts. Let's dig in. Okay, let's crack into our database and here I'll create a simple sales table with an ID and a date field. Let's just pretend there's other information in there. Setting the type to timestamp, which Postgres will store as UTC with no time zone information. That's what we need, isn't it? Dates stored as UTC? I'll add a single date value, setting it to one minute before midnight on New Year's Eve 2012. This is when my sales madness happened. Now comes the question, when exactly did this sale occur? So let's start with a simple select query. Here, I'll query the table and I see the time exactly as I entered it. But it's meaningless to me. I mean, I know that the date is stored in UTC format, but my accountant in New York doesn't know this. And he's reading the sales report, which shows this sale happened right before midnight and should be counted in my books for the tax year 2022. We can ask Postgres to show us exact time zone information by appending at time zone to our timestamp and then specifying the time zone that we want to convert to. Postgres does this for us. That's rad. The result, as you can see, is five hours behind UTC. Hmm. That's surprising. Is this correct? The answer, of course, is that it depends entirely on when and where the query was written. And that depends on our server. 
So let's ask our server which time zone it's in. And as you can see, my local Postgres server thinks it's in Pacific Honolulu time, which is where I used to live. That's GMT minus 10. So I moved to California a few months ago, so I should probably change this, which I can do by using set time zone and then passing in the current offset as text, the name of the time zone, or the abbreviation. And I'll do the simplest thing as you see, which is just to use the GMT offset of where I am. And we're set. If you want to know the names and abbreviations of time zones that Postgres supports, you can just run this query, something that could prove very useful for you and your application when it comes to storing time information. You can just store this stuff in a table. All right, back to our problem. As you can see, we have an issue. Our servers are on the West Coast and the sale time was recorded at one minute before midnight West Coast time, which is Pacific Standard Time, PST. In New York, that would have been two hours later, January 1st at 1.59 a.m., but Postgres is showing our sale in New York, which is relative to UTC, which is how the date was stored, and it's five hours behind the actual sales time, and that is incorrect. Ugh, we need to fix this. Simplest thing to do is to drop and recreate my sales table, this time using a timestamp data type with a time zone specification. That's timestamp TZ. This will store the value as UTC in our database under the covers, but it will also have a time zone offset, so Postgres will know how to present it to us accurately. All right, as you can see, I've also added the sales record to our table. So let's query one more time. And here you can see that the time zone, negative eight, which is my time zone here in California, because I just changed everything, it's appended to the time value. Why is this a good thing? It's a good thing because now our reports are correct. When a company reports sales, it must do so relative to the location that it does business. So if my company is based in New York, our sales need to reflect that. Here you can see that the sale is recorded in 2023, so it belongs in our 23 books, not our 22 books, which is what my accountant wanted to see. Okay, so here's a tip. If you really wanna blow your boss or accountant away, make sure that you add individual values for year, month, day, and quarter, as well as the timestamp, and make sure they're all in the relevant time zone for your business. Your boss or accountant will probably pull the data into Excel anyway, Doing this will allow them to pop things into a pivot table, make some charts, have a full data freakout. To do this, I'm using Postgres's date part function, which extracts integer values for year, quarter, month, and day. Okay, one more thing. When your app is in production, it's likely that you store your data in the cloud somewhere. Have you ever wondered how their database servers are configured? Specifically the time zone? It might be tempting to think all of this time zone stuff doesn't matter, but let me disabuse you of that. To understand this, I need to add some more detail to my date issue with my accountant. When I ran TechPub back in 2012, I had a pretty big sale going on during the holidays. It was our fourth year in business, and our customer base had grown dramatically. I reduced the price of our subscriptions, and I had a six-figure sale month. That's incredible, to say the least. The sales stretched into New Year's as well, and yeah, my server was in Oregon, my business was in Hawaii, my database's time zone was set to UTC. Hmm, that means I got to stay up very late trying to unsnarl the time zone mess that my sales data was in. Also, I could count my fat stacks of cash, <laughs> make sure my records reconciled with my bank, which reconciled with my tax filing, and also so I could make this YouTube video for you. Figuring out my sales data wasn't actually that hard. But what happens when your application serves clients around the globe? and they need to know exact date information. They might wanna know things like when they last logged in or received a chat message. In that case, you're gonna to have to be sure that you translate the UTC information in your database to their time zone. One way to solve this problem is just to let Postgres do it for you. Here, I have a messages table, and to send a message, all I need to do is to track what time zone it's coming from and where it's going to. There are many ways you can track this information. When a user logs in, for instance, you can geolocate them based on IP or whatever. As you can see, I have two generated columns which translate the dates for us. These columns will act as virtual columns, storing the dates right alongside the original. If you don't wanna store the date offsets, you certainly don't have to. Let's recreate our table, but this time, we'll just store the timestamp, and I'll add my message back in because, well, yeah, Postgres is pretty rad. Now, when I query the information, I'll pass the client offset as a parameter. Here I'm hard coding it in the SQL bits, but ideally you would do this with your ORM, ensuring that your user sees a date that makes sense to them and the time zone that they're in currently. All right then, well that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this little trip into the world of dates and pain and times in Postgres. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. If you liked what you saw and want to learn more, as I mentioned, I have a free ebook for you. There's a link in the description. Thanks again for watching. See you soon.